Hello, this is Tim Rogers. You are watching Kotaku.com. Final Fantasy VII was released in 1997. Shortly after that, I moved to Japan, where I lived for 10 years. You can live in Japan for 10 years, too. Just do what I did. Go there and be resourceful. Final Fantasy fan though I am, I've never played Final Fantasy VII in Japanese. I've been doing that recently, and I'm noticing all sorts of tiny little differences between the Japanese and English versions of the game. Last time, we met Sephiroth, rival of the main character, Cloud, in a flashback detailing Cloud's past. Now we're back in the game's present timeline chasing after Sephiroth as he leaves a trail of dead bodies in his wake. With this part of the game, we've left the super dense set-piece parade of the first 10 hours in Midgar. We are now out in the open, where things become freer and more non-linear. This part of the game makes me remember a kid in my college dorm at Indiana University in Bloomington, Indiana in 1999. This kid was ripped, and I never saw him wearing a shirt. He loved NASCAR. I was there the day he looked at the wall scroll in a computer science major's room, and was like, no way! That dude has a sword and a motorcycle? Shoot! What video game is that from? And I was like, Final Fantasy VII. He bought a PlayStation. One night at around 3 a.m. he came over to my room. He was like, dude, you're still awake? And I was like, yeah. And he was like, dude, I thought I beat the game. And then I got out of Midgar. And it's like, dude, there's like a whole different game out there, dude. I mention this because I feel like the translator experienced the same surprise. Wow, there's a lot of game outside Midgar. And as we've established, our translator was in a great hurry. It'd be way too easy to make fun of most of the dialogue in the game, so I'll refrain from being mean, though I sure won't refrain from having a good time. After some weirdness where we catch a chocobo and avoid a monster snake in a swamp and trade glares with our rivals, the Turks, we wind up at the city of Junon. This is a sleepy town that sits below a fancy metropolis with a giant cannon. In the fiction of the game, this town is like a prototype of Midgar. The stubborn live downstairs, the ambitious live upstairs. Well, we walk over to a beach and meet a little girl who's friends with a dolphin. A boss appears, knocking her into the water. We fight the boss. Now there's this amazing dialogue. This is bad. You don't think she's dead, do you? Young man, CPR, now. Mouth to mouth? Cloud, what are you going to do? She's just a girl. Whoa, this is definitely 100% unintentional on the part of the translator, though this dialogue sure makes it look like Cloud is saying it's okay for this girl to die because she just a girl. Well, in Japanese, he says, ah, yeah, ano, onna no kodashi, which is more like, uh, uh, it's, she's a girl. Like in a sort of, ooh, gross, I don't want to put my lips on a girl, sort of stammering, bashful way. Anyway, we concoct a plan to go up to Junon, where there's a parade going on to celebrate the promotion of President Rufus Shinra. Cloud goes up alone. He dresses up as a Shinra soldier and marches in a parade, which is kind of weird. After that, he's free to explore the town, which is full of colorful characters. One of the shops in Junon has employed three cute ladies to greet customers. One of the girls says, I won't charge you for a smile. In Japanese, she says, <laughs> My literal translation. He, he, this smiling face is a service. Japanese borrows the English word service to mean something free. A basket of complimentary bread at a restaurant, for example, would be a service. I like that. Also, look at how the Japanese character set includes this little heart. As of 1997, when Final Fantasy VII was released, the Japanese character set had all sorts of weird little pictures in there. This is pretty neat to think about. They've had emoji in Japanese for a very long time. Whoa, did you know that emoji is a Japanese word? E means picture, and moji means letter, as in letter of an alphabet. So emoji means picture letter. You might have already known that. Please let me know in the comments if you didn't already know that. The shopkeeper says, of the girls, there's a lot of stores in Junon. If we don't do this, we can't compete. What bothers me is that the girls make more than me. Wow. In Japanese, he says this a fair deal more delicately. Ultra literally, this means, however, it is a seed of worry that the girls' salaries might exceed the store's profits. This whole Junon set piece is long, cute, and free of a single battle. It's Final Fantasy VII giving the player a breather. The first ten hours were in tense and packed with conflict. Then the game cut players loose for a bit. Now it's back to set pieces, except this is a set piece you can chill out with. And like much of the rest of this middle half of Final Fantasy VII Disc 1, it's got some incredible text boxes that the translator might have translated without even looking at the game. 
take a look at this one. Hey, hey you, you messing with the army? Cloud's response options are, who cares? Or what if I am? Do you really want me to explain this one? I probably shouldn't, so I'll summarize. This is the same in Japanese. It's nonsense in either language. I love it. In disguise, Cloud witnesses the relationship between Rufus Shinra and Heidegger, his military commander-in-chief. Heidegger's name in Japanese is actually Heidegger. Heidegger. Heidegger's trademark is that he laughs a lot. Rufus and him have a little routine. When Heidegger laughs, Rufus tells him to stop laughing, and Heidegger stops laughing. In English, Rufus says, Stop that stupid horse laugh. In Japanese, he says, Sono warai kata wa yamero. Stop laughing like that. He does not at all liken the sound of Heidegger's laugh to the sound of a horse. This is a rare example of the translator injecting some personality into a place where much less personality existed in Japanese. I like it. Now if, for example, we did want to say, stop that stupid horse laugh in Japanese, we could say it like this. Eventually, we all sneak onto a boat headed across the sea, disguised as members of its crew. We can talk to all our party members and have fun dialogues about how dumb it is to be wearing a Shinra soldier uniform. Then we can talk to this sailor who says, Hey, what's wrong, kid? You got no pep. A seaman's gotta have oomph. If I were composing a list of the best text boxes in Final Fantasy VII, this one would easily be in the top 100. In Japanese, he says, Oh, oh, doushitai wakai no genki ga nee zo umi no otoku. He uses the common word Genki, which has a million interpretations, though it generally means wellness or energy. Genki is one of the first words that foreigners moving to Japan learn not to translate, and instead use as is in English conversations. So we could translate this as, what's wrong kid, you got no Genki. If you ask me, and maybe you did, English speakers the world over could borrow Genki the way Japanese borrows the word guts in this next line here. Gatsuda. Guts. A seaman is guts. Guts. Curiously, despite the presence of this English loan word, guts, the translator translated it as umph. We find and talk to Barrett. He is wearing a hilarious sailor outfit. Just look at it. I'd buy that as a plushie. Barrett is raging out about Heidecker and Rufus being so geographically close to him, yet legally untouchable to his killing instinct. He says, God, I can't take it anymore. In Japanese, he says, Maybe I'm the only person in the world who finds it interesting that the translator copied the Japanese script's exclamation point quantity two for God and one for I can't take it anymore. An alarm sounds. There's an intruder on the boat. Barrett urges Cloud into evasive action. Get off your spiky butt and let's go, Cloud. This is a good example of the translator inserting jocular epithets into the script in places where no such familiarity exists. In the Japanese original, In Japanese, he just says, We can't just stand around here. Let's go, Cloud. He's not slinging any sort of nickname at Cloud. I'm not complaining. I actually happen to like Barrett calling Cloud spiky butt. It turns out Sephiroth is on a boat. Sephiroth brought a boss with him. It's his alien ancestor, Genova. Here I just have to point out that Genova looks similar to Bilan, the monster on the boat at the beginning of the Sega Saturn game, Dark Dark Savior. Dark Savior totally owns, by the way. The boat lands in Costa del Sol. Our buddies get out. Barrett is quick to scream with relief. Darn! Sure is hot here. Barrett's darn in Japanese is ka. Atsui na koko wa ka is not ga, so it's darn instead of god. Ga in Japanese is just the letter for ka plus two tiny dots. So these tiny dots are, in our translator's mind, the difference between god and darn. Neat! Also, the translator used only one exclamation point instead of the two present in Japanese. I hope somebody is keeping score here. Barrett bids hasty adieu to his sailor suit. Eris indicates that the sailor suit was cute. This dialogue is precious. Tifa tells Barrett he should use the sailor suit as pajamas. In English, she words it like this. Barrett, why don't you use that sailor suit for pajamas? In
in Japanese, she says, Barretto, ano sera fuku pajama ni shinasai. Barrett, please wear that sailor suit as pajamas. This is only a slight difference, and you know how I love slight differences. The girls ask Cloud to agree to Barrett's sailor cuteness. If you choose yes, Cloud replies with, Ah. You look like a bear wearing a marshmallow. This is another one of our top 100 hot text boxes, so let's rip into it. In Japanese, it's Ah, marshmallow kabuta kuma mitai de pittari dana. Japanese has many different verbs for wear, depending on the type of clothing item or accessory you're talking about. You kiru a shirt, you haku a pair of pants, you kakeru sunglasses, and you kaburu a hat. So, the bear of Cloud's analogy is wearing the marshmallow like a hat, pulled down over the top of its head, stretched tight tight as a drum over its body. So if we use our imaginations way too much, we could translate the line like this. You look like a bear who pulled a marshmallow down over the top of its head like a hat, stretching it tight as a drum over its entire body. Also, the ah with which Cloud begins the sentence in Japanese is an ah of affirmation. It could be translated as yeah. Instead, the translator who has now been awake for probably 120 consecutive hours translated it as ah. This is fine, I will not get angry at this. Barrett does not like his fashion being discussed in third person. He explains, The heck's that supposed to mean? This happens to be the most comfortable, so shoo up! In Japanese, he says, He uses the term ichora, which is a cute little phrase meaning one's best outfit of clothes. I have a little story about that word. When I used to work at Sony Computer Entertainment, I used to work at Sony Computer Entertainment, by the way, in the early 2000s, I sometimes wore a suit. I don't know why. I had three suits. They were blue, gray, and brown. I was wearing the blue suit one day when an executive from upstairs came to our section. I was the only guy in our section wearing a suit that day. The executive was a renowned hard butt tough guy who talked charmingly like a Yakuza stereotype. Employees loved him for it. He slapped me real hard on the shoulder and said, <laughs> Look at this Ichorayaro over here. I just grinned and said, Yep, yep, that's me. I had to look Ichora up in the dictionary later. If I had known what that word meant when the guy called me that, I could have said, Actually, I own three suits. Wanna feel old? I just bragged about how I used to own three suits while working at a fancy office job 15 years ago while talking about a video game that came out 20 years ago. I gotta say, I feel a little bit weird right now, and I also gotta say, I love the idea of ending this video right where I'm feeling weird. In our next episode, our friends will chase Sephiroth through the resort town of Costa del Sol. And hey, by the way, thanks to thelifestream.net for providing all the English footage. I'll see you next time, real soon.